All right, so welcome everybody. It's, I'm, I'm so thrilled uh, that you're all joining us today. Um, I know that there's been a huge amount going on when it comes to virtual events. I don't know each of you, but I've, I've been to probably 20 virtual events um, since this coronavirus uh, pandemic kicked off. So there's a lot of online content out there. There's a lot of demand for our time when it comes to a, a online events. So I really appreciate that you're all joining us today. Um, before we go on as a quick intro, because many of you won't know who I am, um, I've been working in community for about 20 years now. I used to lead community at Canonical for the Ubuntu project at GitHub and XPRIZE. And I'm a consultant. I work with lots of different companies to help them build communities. And we started the Community Leadership Summit about 10 years ago, I think it was now. Um, and everybody that you're seeing here on the screen and who's a panelist today, uh, who's a moderator today, has been very, very involved in community for a number of years. And in many cases have been involved in, in, in the Community Leadership Summit for a number of years as well. Um, so first of all, before we go on, I wanna say an enormous thank you to, to the All Things Open team. Um, I first went to All Things Open about five or six years ago and I'd never heard of this event and showed up and I couldn't believe all the speakers that they had and a lot of close friends and people who I know in the industry were there. And not only is it a wonderful event, but also I've become pretty close friends with Todd Lewis, who runs the event. And Todd is just such a genuine person. He's got an amazing team. And I know that for many of us, it's not just, an, it's not just a conference anymore. It's, it's an event that we all, we're all rooting for. Um, so, you know, having CLS be a part of, of ATO, I think was, was a natural choice. Um, but also, you know, big thanks to the OSCON event that wrapped its, you know, closed its doors um, fairly recently. That's where our home for CLS was uh, for many, many years. But moving forward, we're going to be part of all things open. So, you know, every year, typically we, we get together in person, you know, when we meet um, in a convention center with completely overpriced, terrible coffee. Um, and for anyone who's been to CLS before, it is the definition of a chewing gum and sticky tape kind of event. Um, by design, it's a bunch of community dorks hanging out with each other. Our goal here isn't to put the most sheened, perfect event on. The goal is to focus on what's, what matters, and that is the content. That is the, the discussion and the engagement with each other. And one of the things that I always love every year about CLS, and it's nothing to do with me, or you know, Van has been involved every year. Um, I came as an attendee for the first one, and then um, some kind of like stick got pulled out and yanked him in, and he's been helping every single year. Amber's helped many, many years as well. Nithya's helped many, many. It's, it really is a team effort. Um, and but what I love about it every year <clears throat> is that it's, it's one part interesting discussions, but it's just kind of one part therapy. We hang out with each other. We we share each other's successes. We commiserate each other in our in our failures, and it's it's it really is a communal setting. Um, and I was honestly a bit worried about how this was going to work in a digital set, setting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But it's a pretty special place, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's had its longevity. And again, it's got nothing to do with the organization because, frankly, it's a very simple event to organize. It really is. It's the people who show up up, up to it. So. You know, I'm hoping that we'll be able to transition to some of this into a digital setting. Now, every year, typically what we do is we run this as, non, as a non-conference. And uh, we, we buy a roll of, a very large roll of white paper, and we annoy the convention center every year because we stick it to the wall, and we get told off every year for sticking it to the wall because we usually forget the blue tape. Um, and what we do is people show up and they volunteer sessions that they're interested in talking about. And then we write them on these little session cards and we stick them on, on, on the board. And Van, who is the master session crafter, takes all of these different random ideas and helps to consolidate them together into, into, a, into a schedule that, that works well. Um, and then what we do is we get into rooms and we talk. There's no presentations with the exception of we used to, we, you know, we typically have little keynote sessions, but it's all discussions. So if you've never been to CLS before, don't expect that you're going to be sitting in, in, you know, watching a Zoom session like the keynotes today and watching people run through slides. That's not what we do. We're going to get together and talk. We're going to discuss and we're going to really explore these different topics in detail. Now, 
we would have liked to have done this on conference approach like we normally do at CLS because you know you'd show up to CLS at the beginning and there'd be there'd be no schedule. Uh, we'd we'd make it that morning, but that was going to be a little bit too difficult to do in an online setting. So what I decided to do was to reach out to some people who I've seen be amazing facilitators at um, at events at CLS and to ask them to pick topics and then to run a specific set of topics. So the format of the sessions is gonna be the same. It's just that we didn't have the open on conference piece because it's just kind of difficult to do that online. So I just wanna quickly introduce our moderators here. So, um, you know, these, these folks are gonna be running the sessions uh, over the course of the day. Um, we're gonna cover each what each of the sessions is in a second, um, but I just wanna yeah, introduce these folks uh, personally. Uh, so Nithya has been around the open source community for a number of years, does an amazing job at Comcast and is a real, I'd say a real inspiration leader, especially when it com comes to diversity and inclusion and the corporate relationship between open source and communities. And I'm just so thrilled that Nithya is joining. Guy Martin has again been around open source for a number of years. Guy is the executive director of Oasis. Um, um, he, he previously was at Red Hat and Samsung and Autodesk, and he's he's just a really fabulous, collaborative human being as well. I'll skip over me, but Mary, Mary's a bit of a legend in the DevRel world, um, and uh, you know has been running you know a DevRel newsletter and has the community pulse and has just done so much amazing work over over the course of her career. Mary used to be at O'Reilly as well um, a number of years ago. I think that's how I met Mary was at, at O'Reilly, um, and just. I'm really excited about her session, which is going to be about connecting DevRel teams and community teams to other teams. Um, Amber, now, if you haven't met Amber, you're missing out. <laughs> Amber is, is one of my favorite people in the world. I met Amber through the Ubuntu community. Um, I actually worked with her um, husband, Pete Grainer, who worked at Canonical as well. And he said, hey, my wife is interested in coming and participating in Ubuntu. And I was like, that, that sounds cool. And little did we realize what the seismic effect of Amber's impact on Ubuntu was going to be. She just really rocked the Ubuntu community and then went on to really build a pretty amazing career. And there's a core light right now, um, which is a security company. Um, Deb Nicholson, many of you will know from open source and free software. Deb's at the OSI right now. She was previously at the Software Freedom Conservancy and just is not only a delight to spend time with, but is just a phenomenal member of our community and one of the most incredible facilitators. I've, I've learned a lot of facilitation from Deb herself. Um, Samantha, I've known again for a number of years, um, really, really incredible community manager and very deeply invested in the metrics world. And uh, Samantha's gonna be running a session later on on metrics and community health. And I think it's gonna be really incredible to see. And uh, it's just been a real pleasure spending time with Samantha. I learned so much from Samantha. Um, and then Van. Van is uh, at Google. Van is very, very into mindfulness, for example. So there's been a number of times where I've wandered into a session at CLS and no one's talking and everyone's kind of sat there with their eyes closed. And I <laughs> I thought that Van was setting up some kind, of, some kind of cabal to take over the world. But no, it turns out that they were just practicing mindfulness. And Van keeps us all grounded and keeps our, our feet on the ground and is going to be talking about about uh, really health, you know, building healthy communities, not just in terms of metrics, but in terms of being a human being. So thank you all to our moderators for, for, for helping to run these sessions. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, CLS is intended to be completely discussion-based. So there's gonna be no slides, it's gonna be all discussion. So you're probably gonna be thinking, okay, how do I do that in a online setting with Zoom, um, which we've all got varying opinions on. Well, what we're gonna do is, You'll see on the on the on the ATOs on the All Things Open schedule <clears throat> each of the different sessions for CLS, and you'll be able to go and join the sessions. And it's going to open up your Zoom window. And when you open up your Zoom window, you're going to see a toolbar that looks a little bit like this. Now, what you can do is in the session, you can first of all use the chat, and you can participate there if you want to. Um, you're more than welcome to just chat if you don't feel comfortable turning your your microphone on and participating as a speaker or as a panelist you're more than welcome to chat there. And each of our different moderators who are gonna be um, running the sessions is gonna be monitoring the chat as well as welcoming people to be panelists as well, or, or be, being able to speak. Um, so feel very comfortable just typing and, and sharing. 
Um, but the other option you've got here is you can volunteer to come in and, and, and enable your microphone. You can hit the raise hand button or you can, you can mention it on chat. Um, so Amber is gonna be running the other track. I'm running this track for the whole day. Um, if you wanna be, uh, you, if you want to be heard, then just mention it in the chat or hit the raise hand button um, and we'll be able to enable your, your microphone for you so you can come and participate. I think we would like to have as many of you as possible on mic, if possible, because it's going to make the sessions a lot more interactive. What we don't want to do as moderators is just be talking the entire day. We want to be really probing and exploring and helping to find other people's perspectives and opinions. And to be very clear on that as well, just making sure that we don't all have to agree. So we want to sometimes some of the most amazing moments at CLS are where we disagree and we explore di people's different ideas. And of course, as long as it's on a platform of being respectful. Um, so if you've got any questions about this, <clears throat> you can always reach out to Amber on the other track. And thank you again, Amber, for, for running CLS on, on the other track. Um, or, you know, like I say, I'm going to be on this track for the, for the full day as well. Now, the other thing as well is, and I sent this as a message to each of the different session moderators, um, we've, I've created some Google Docs where we're going to be tracking notes. Um, and we'll be putting the links into the Google Docs at the beginning of each session. So this is a doc where everybody can go in there and, and, and edit. So first of all, be nice. Don't go and write mean things into the document. Otherwise, we'll get very angry. Um, and we'll probably set Van on you. And he's he, he seems passive, but he's actually extremely aggressive when he's being provoked. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll make sure that uh, those docs are open. But I'd love if you can go in there and leave general notes and resources you can see in the top section. But as you're having these discussions, is, is where there are real moments of like an aha moment, and a, a sense of like, wow, that's a really in interesting principle or a concept or a share, then go and put those in the key insights in there for the wrap up session. Um, we want, sometimes these documents can just be real, really incredible, incredible sources of, of, of content. So um, we're not asking all of you to go in there and, and, and write notes if you don't feel like you want to, but the more of you that can go in there and share your notes and share feedback from the sessions, that would be wonderful because we'd like to be able to share these documents with everybody at the end so that everyone can go and see what happened in the sessions that they missed. Um, another thing to, to note here as well is that we're gonna do a wrap up at 5 p.m. Eastern time today. Now, this is really, really important. This, is, this isn't the usual conference wrap up where you know everyone thanks the sponsors and whatever. <clears throat> this is where each of the session moderators is gonna show up. Um, and read out some, just some key insights some key interesting concepts and, and moments from their sessions. So the cool thing about the wrap up is that when you go there, you'll be able to hear a little back, bit about each of the different sessions because you can only go to one session at a time because there's two tracks. So you're gonna miss, you know, frankly about half of the day. So this is gonna be a great way to just get a, a download of, of some of the things that were covered throughout the day, okay? so. Um, but definitely make sure that you join the, the wrap up at 5 p.m. Eastern. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through each of the different topics that we're gonna be covering today. And I'm gonna uh, ask our fearless moderators if they can just provide a quick minute long summary of their session and what they're interested in covering. And then we'll go from there. So why don't we start off with, with you, Nithya, fostering and mentoring new community leaders. What are you excited to discuss in this session? This is such an exciting topic, Jono, because um, open source, while it's been around for a long time, most community managers uh, grew up organically and they picked up you know, bits and pieces of their role through uh, participation in the community and hallway tracks and conferences and CLS. And, and I think we need to do a better job of fostering and mentoring some of our new people coming in because community management is one of the most critical roles in any project, in any company, and we need to invest in their education, in their support, in their mentoring. And so I'm super excited to foster this communication and, and discussion, if you will, on how we can do that better going forward. Yeah, wonderful. No, I think it's gonna be a really, really interesting session and, and such a prescient one as well, because I think there is, we need great leaders and sometimes great leadership is not necessarily intuitive. And there's a lot of people who wanna be great leaders who 
don't necessarily have the tools or the support or the mentoring. So I think that's going to be really a really neat session. Now, I don't know if Guy's here. Guy, are you? I am here. You ah, you're there. No, I in. Since you joined. I'm, I'm here. How are you? All right. Good Let's to see it, you. Guy. And good to see everybody. So um, I'm going to be talking about building diverse teams and projects and facilitating this discussion with all of you. I, I like Nithya, I'm really excited about this because I know that as a leader, uh, this is a huge challenge. Um, and anybody who's tried to lead communities or, or, or teams uh, knows that this is one of those things that you know, you just have to kind of dig in and, and figure it out. And um, hopefully we'll get some strategies and, and brainstorm some strategies to help make this a little bit easier for all of us. So um, really excited to be here and looking forward to it. Yeah, and Guy has, has delivered, um, he, he's very humble, so he probably won't share this, but he's delivered, a, he's done a number of talks at conferences about his, his journey and his experience with diversity, which are really cool to check out. So if you haven't seen that, definitely go and look those up on YouTube. Well, YouTube. actually, Jono, it's funny that you mentioned that. I'm actually giving a talk at two mm. to Pacific um, with Sue Wands, and I'm actually giving that same presentation or a modified oh, cool. version of that. So I'm, I'm actually giving it today. Yeah, definitely go and check that out, folks. It's really, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, all right. So next up, we've got Mary Thangval on connecting community and dev rel teams with other teams. So Mary, what are you excited about covering in this? Hi there. I am excited about this. I think it's so often that we as community and DevRel teams get focused on engaging with the external community that we don't always take the time that we need to engage with our internal coworkers, our internal community at our companies. So we're going to be talking a lot about how do we do this? How do we go about connecting with other teams? What's the value in that? Um, and then also how do we make sure that we're amplifying the work that we do and really advocating internally for the external community and making that a part of our day-to-day -day job. Wonderful. Yeah, this is such, excited for the conversation. Yeah, this is such an important conversation. I'm so glad that you're leading this, Mary, because I know that you've spent a lot of time as a consultant and in your current role navigating this territory. So I think that's going to be a really interesting discussion. Um, I'm not sure if we've got Deb here. Uh, I don't think Deb. I am here. Yay, there's Deb. <laughs> oh, wait, also video, I think. Wait, nope. I clicked it and. Ah, there you are, Deb. I am here. Oh, oh, look at that. I'm like sitting on your shoulder like a little parrot. Um, cool. So um, we're going to talk uh, right after this, actually, about how to create a sustainable community. So um, one of the things that I think is really uh, interesting is that uh, you meet people with all these great ideas and then it's sort of like, then you see them next year and you're like, how'd that go? And it's like, well, and they got stuck somewhere. Um, it's not because the idea wasn't great, but sometimes it's just like the organizational stuff is, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot when you're also trying to make your great idea happen. And so we're going to talk about like some of the nuts and bolts that you have to get in place and some of the ways that you lay a foundation so that you end up, um, you know, all still friends a year in and everything like that. Uh, so I'm really excited to hear from other folks uh, what their experiences, what's worked for them, and uh, for folks to bring like things that they got stuck on so that we can all kind of like talk about it together and maybe help them get over the hump. So we'll be yeah. there at noon. Looking forward to this. I think this is going to be so interesting because this has been a topic that I know has been discussed quite a lot in open source and free software specifically. And sustainability when it comes to, you know, healthy mod moderation and healthy discussion and that, but also like, where does the money come from to help fund open source projects and free software projects? So it's going to be, that, there's a lot of meat on that bone. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, Van, creating a healthy community culture. Mute. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Hey, so um, as you could see, that's a, there's a, there's some, uh, overlap between the last topic and this one. Um, I tend to think about this, uh, this is a title they came up with, but I think about this more about, you have sustainable communities, but what about sustainable community management or sustainable community participation? So how do we support ourselves as, and the community members that are most active in the community to, to approach the work in a healthy manner and in a sustainable way for themselves? So it's yeah. kind of more the personal aspect of this as opposed to the organizational aspect. Yeah. Well, one of the things I've always admired about you, Van, is just like your sense of EQ has always been through the roof. And I can imagine that's going to be 
pretty prevalent throughout that session. So I think that's good. But, and I do want to say though, that as a uh, unconference session at CLS, what I like to do at the beginning is ask people why they've come to the topic. So, yeah. you know, we'll talk about whatever aspects that you want to talk about of healthy community culture, not just what I'm passionate about. So yeah. it's your yeah. session. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you should run a session where you just all sit there meditating. <laughs> Have you done that online yet, Van? <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, we, uh, I don't know that we'll be doing a lot of that in this particular session. But, right. <laughs> uh, that would be, That'd be uh, interesting, though. Uh, if that's what people want, I'm happy to guide some <laughs> that as well. All right. All right. And then we've got um, Amber, who's going to be talking about planning and running online and in-person events. So what do you think about this one, Amber? I, I think it's really important now more than ever as we're all adjusting to this, um, I refuse to use the term, but anyway, we, as we're adjusting to the way we have to do events now, um, people who, you know, we've all been so used to doing in-person events and we got the strategy down and our checklist down, but we don't really have these really good checklists yet for online events and then how do you, you know, how, what are the pitfalls that you run into and what are the, you know, you can spend very little money or you can spend you know 100k plus on tooling for these type of events so you know what do you need and and looking forward to seeing what people's questions are what you're struggling with maybe there's an event you're looking to plan in 2021 and you just maybe want to go through that sanity check and and checklist for that so really look as as others have said this is your session as attendees i'm just here to facilitate and take notes and help everybody else take notes but i do have a, a great checklist that that i'll share at the end uh, of the day i don't want to share it beforehand because i don't want to um you know drive the conversation in a specific way, but I, I will share it at the end of the day. Um, but uh, yeah, just looking forward to seeing what, what people need and, and, and where you want to go in 2021 with your events. So. Yeah, no, it's going to be exciting. And I know, Amber, you're not going to brag about this, but I'm going to brag on your behalf. Why don't you just tell everybody about, just for a moment, about Zeke Week? Because Amber just ran an, an amazing event called Zeke Week, and it, it was pretty cool, right? It was. We we didn't invest in any new tooling, and we had almost 1,500 people uh, view the sessions. We used a combination of Zoom and uh, YouTube, uh, and we and Slack, and it was amazing. And we had so many discussions going that it. it Considering last year in person, we had less than 200 people and this year uh, we had more than 1500 registers. So it was it was a really great event. So. Pretty, yeah, pretty remarkable stuff. Um, great. And then next we've got Samantha who's going to be <coughs> all talking about uh, measuring community health. Uh, yeah, so this is probably one of the bigger issues uh, that any community manager faces. Um, on one hand, you've got stakeholders in business. How do you prove the ROI of the community? Why are they funding it? On the other hand, you have a community that needs more of a voice and more of an understanding of what's going on. Um, so what we want to do is we want to focus on widening the conversation for how we measure community health. Uh, kind of similar to what Van was saying, um, we're not really talking about a community as a marketing ploy or as a small group where you can put a bunch of leads. We're talking about organic, real communities um, that you are fostering, building, and introducing um, a bunch of resources and technology, and especially in open source communities, um, there's a lot of priorities that have to be managed and run. So how exactly do you create a metrics journey that allows you to find those specific metrics, those specific KPIs that say, this is how my community is growing, whether or not it's going too fast, too slow, whether you should pump the brakes, maybe you should pull over to the side of the road, figure out what happened. Um, so this is all about expanding that conversation to look at your community as a socio-political um, group uh, and figuring out what metrics are actually going to matter for your specific flavor of connection. Yeah, that's um, it's going to be really interesting. And uh, um, one of the many areas where Samantha has spent a whole bunch of work has been in the Chaos Project, which has been all around um, kind of settling on 
a little bit more consistency when it comes to um, measuring, especially within open source. So lots of great experience there. Yeah, and we'll actually have, um, I'm hoping, a few uh, Chaos uh, community members as well. Um, but I hope you don't mind, but a small plug. They are also available for you to talk uh, in the sponsor booth uh, with a little bit more of an extended conversation. Uh, so you should see Elizabeth, the community manager for Chaos, and then uh, Georg, Matt. Um, hopefully you'll be able to meet us and we'll get a firm grip on what those metrics mean across communities and then what it's going to mean for yours specifically. Yeah, perfect. Um, and then uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up. I'm going to be um, facilitating a session which is about incentives and rewards. Um, I just find that um, human beings, just psychologically, we're naturally attracted to incentives. Um, you know, if you do this thing, you will get this thing. And they come in many different flavors. And I'd love to just have a session to just really dig into everything that's connected to that, whether it's um, what kind of what kind of swag do you send out? What kind of rewards do you share? How do you incentivize people, especially in, you know, in digital communities, given that so many of us are working from home? Um, um, and how do you identify what kinds of behavior you want to incentivize and encourage um, and then reward that appropriately? How do you do this on a budget? You know, how do you if you've got a very limited amount of money for your for your project, how can you use it most wisely? How do you measure that effectively when you're figuring out how to define those kinds of behaviors? So I think there's a lot of a lot of things we can really dig into in that session as well. Um, well, thank you again to all of the to, to all of our moderators, all of our facilitators uh, for, for taking time out of your day. You're all incredibly busy people, but you're all amazing at this. And I think I can't think of many people who wouldn't be better at, 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 at running these at, at running these sessions again just as a reminder there will be the wrap-up session at 5 p.m eastern so you know not only are each of our moderate session moderators going to be moderating the session and keeping them flowing but also they'll be rejoining for the wrap-up at the end of the day as well to share some of those key insights and then um i also just want to share that we we have the, the hashtags uh, so there's going to be hashtag CLS 2020 for CLS, and then there's the broader hashtag ATO 2020, which is for the broader ATO event. Um, and then also just on behalf, really on behalf of ATO, I just want to say a big thank you as well to all of the sponsors who have been making this happen. Um, I don't know if many of you um, have run online events or in-person events before, but it's a lot of work to pull an event together. And um, Todd and his team have done an amazing job trying to get, <laughs> trying to kind of herd all of these cats into one place online. So, um, and it wouldn't be possible, of course, with, with, the, with the headlining sponsors over here and then with the other sponsors over here as well. So I'm gonna stop, sh stop sharing. Um, before we wrap up, and we'll, maybe we'll get out of here a little bit early so everyone can go and have a pee and get some coffee. Uh, any questions, anything to discuss before we we wrap up today, especially from the moderators? Is there anything you wanted to discuss? What's happening in the chat, but I just wanted to say like a couple of us shared the direct links to our notes docs, which are currently empty, but the yeah. reason for sharing them is if you're someone thinking you'd want to come to our sessions, please feel free to throw topics in there Yeah, or, or anything you want to share in advance for everyone especially when it comes to metrics, because um, there are going to be some cases where we might want to get into the weeds because we might find a general concept that we can pull out of those weird cornerstone pieces. Um, so we want to make sure that we can get that set up and then I'll kind of garden the duck to make sure that we can have a nice ebb and flow, see the forest and the trees. Yeah, that's a great point, Samantha. The thing is, as well as also, um, just to be clear to everybody, um, CLS is always kind of a bit of a car that's being built as we're running it, as we're driving it. So as we go through today, if there's any comments, any concerns, any questions that you've got about your attendance at CLS, just let us know, you know, like we're not, we're not wedded to any particular decisions when it comes to the, the day. Our number one goal here is to make sure that it's valuable for all of our attendees. And of course, everyone who you see on the screen right now. So you know, if you've got some feedback, if, if we're figuring out ways of, of, of running sessions better, then let us know. And then we can make sure we can share that with each of the different moderators as the day progresses. So, you know, we're open book. Again, just as a reminder, feel free to chat in the, in the chat if you 
would prefer to be a keyboard warrior, but if you do want to be, you know, unlock the power of your microphone and, and join as a, as a panelist, don't, you absolutely feel free to, to let us know. Um, I think we'd like to make sure we get your permission before you bring on, because these are all being recorded, so we can't just switch everybody on. Um, but we want to make sure that you feel very, very comfortable in, in joining as well. But also, with great power comes great responsibility. So please unmute yourself when you start yelling at your dog. Because <laughs> there's always one. <laughs> so. All right. Um, I think I think that's a question from Lisa Marie. It's microphone only, right? No video. I actually, I think we can make you put you on video if we make you a panelist, or we can just unmute your microphone. So you, you've got either option. We can add you as a panelist as well. So, so yeah. All right, so with that in mind, I guess, why don't we wrap up? We'll wrap up this session, go get refreshed and we'll see you. Uh, the, let me bring up the next session, which is gonna be, uh, so the first session uh, that's kicking off at 12 p.m. Eastern is gonna be Deb. Um, on how to create a sustainable community. And then of course, Mary on connecting community and DevRel teams to other teams. Uh, and you'll see on the schedule that um, you'll be able to see where you can join those sessions, but there's, you'll just click the right button and then you'll be into the session. All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care.